world scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Bien amigos, este es el campeonato peso welter de la CIB de 12 rounds. Presentando al retador en la esquina azul, presenting first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with black trim, un peleador de Detroit, Michigan, en los Estados Unidos. Pesando 65.8 kilogramos, he weighed in at a trim and ready 145 pounds. Con un record de 32 victorias, sin derrotas, tiene 20 victorias por knockout. His record includes an outstanding 32 wins. No losses with 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the undefeated challenger, ranked the number two contender by the IBF, presentando al retador número dos en el mundo, el invicto, Oba, the Motor City Car. Y al campeón en la esquina roja. His opponent across the ring is the champion fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with blue trim. Fighting out of Coupe Alto, Puerto Rico, con un peso de 66 kilos, 500 gramos. His weight at 146 and one half pounds. Tiene un record de 24 victorias sin derrota, con 20 ganadas por knockout. His outstanding record includes 24 wins, no losses, with 20 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Welcome, the IBF welterweight champion tonight making his fifth defense of his title. Demos la bienvenida al campeón, el invicto, Felix Tito Trinidad. Once again, our referee, el referee is Robert Gonzalez. Look at me. Hold it. Clear the ring. Hold it. Hold it. Let's just clear it out. Clear the ring. Come on. All right, car, come on. Remember to look at me. Rápido, por favor, ven por acá. Look at me. Mírame a mí. Los dos, mírame a mí. Caballeros, los dos. Let me give the instructions, please. Be quiet. Trinidad, Tito, mírame a mí. Caballeros, los dos son profesionales. Su conducto debe ser como profesional. Gentlemen, both of you are professional fighters. Conduct yourself as such. Look at me. Mírame a mí. Se protege siempre y me obedece mis mando siempre. Aleluya. Hallelujah. You want to get out of the ring now? Or do you want to allow me to hurt? Do you want to hurt? You want to hurt? Okay, be quiet. Go ahead. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Buena suerte a los dos. A toque guantes. Good luck to both of you. Touch gloves. Que ganen mejor. Maybe the best man win. A very authoritative Robert Gonzalez admonishing uh, Panama Lewis, uh, who is uh, Carr's controversial trend of the man of the braids there, still banned from training throughout most of the U.S., licensed in Mexico. He served time for an 83 scandal, which he removed padding from Louis Resco's gloves, resulting in a savage beating of Billy Collins, who shortly thereafter died in a car accident. Many believe the suicide. Oba Carr told us he realizes Lewis has the sorted past, but he feels he's paid his debt to society. Panama Lewis in the corner of Oba Carr. Here we go, round one, scheduled for 12, IBF welterweight championship, Felix Trinidad, easy relaxed style, but he can turn it up in a hurry and go to the attack with much pressure. He can initiate the offense and work off his opponent's moves. Carr told us he feels Trinidad has the perfect style for him to shine, adding that Yuri Boy Campus was tailor-made for Trinidad. He says, I'm not tailor-made for Trinidad. We'll see. And a man that started with a great deal of promise. I remember when Emmanuel Stewart first had him. He told me this kid is destined for championship if he just stays on the straight and narrow. And of course, they've had a lot of differences, a lot of managers, and he didn't stay on the straight and narrow. And therefore, Trinidad is the champion. He's not. But let's see what happens tonight. Well, he said he's 100% for the first time and only time in his career. And I think that we're going to see, because we have seen him in the past, very good. If he's at 100% now, we should see the very best of Obacar. Gar said, I'm totally dedicated, made the supreme sacrifice. I've been through the adversity. What 
Bertie was referring to the managerial problems. Carr recently switching from Emmanuel Stewart to Panama Lewis. Stewart uh, didn't want over Carr's father, a former boxer in the Marines, involved that closely. Carr did, so they split. See the quickness there of Oba Carr. He says, now I'm with a stable team, a new manager, Rory Holloway. Great people around me. I'm a natural welterweight. I'm going to upset the boxing world, he says, because Trinidad's a superstar. Well, they're certainly giving each other a lot of respect and room right now. There's just huge distance between the two. Nothing meaningful has happened yet. One of the great things about this fight is both of them have the tools to beat the other fighter if they minimize the other fighter's effectiveness and maximize their attributes. And that's what's great about this fight. Both undefeated, both young, both aspiring to greatness. I think it's a good fight. And both greatly talented and well said. It's, it's who minimizes the defect and who maximizes their uh, advantage. And that's hard to do right now. Neither one are doing it. You've got a big fat zero between them. They've not done anything to each other. Both in the white trunks, the champion Trinidad with the red and blue stripes down the sides. Minute left in this opening round. Carr telling us he feels that Trinidad would come straight to him. He's a puncher. He says, I'll jab and move, use my speed. This is Carr talking and says, I just can't let Felix dictate the pace. He thinks, does Carr, this will be a classic fight, the fight of the year. Well, up to a, a feeling out process. It's going to be a serious case of speed and slipperiness against power and aggressiveness, and we'll see. It's, it's working out to be a mini chess match for now, but this will heat up. And also that size advantage, it doesn't look like much, but that tall ranginess of Felix Trinidad, he knows how to use that so well. And so far we've seen several wild misses by Overcar. just can't kind of get the range of that tall guy, and that may be what's going to happen to him most of the night if he doesn't move in closer. Trinidad 5'11", Carr 5'9". Now, Carr utilizing the jab as we head for the bell. Get the bell! Go! Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right? I see my head 40. Yes. Very good, very good. Don't forget the double jab. All right? And I want you to bump and weave now. All right? Don't stay up and roll. Huh? That's right. All right? And don't put the right hand to the body. Don't put the right hand to the body. Breathe deep. Huh? The same thing. Repeat around. We're clear with this. Look. And the hand is there. He's watching because he wants to surprise you with the hand right. No, no. He's going to surprise you with the hand right. That's right. Sure. I think you're doing it. I think you're doing it. I've just told, keep your hands up. Remember, he's just jabbing you because he wants to land that right hand. Keep him at a distance. Now start closing in and popping on him when he, when he misses. Good instructions. And the instructions from Panama were also equally good. Let's see what uh, results in the second round. Nothing much resulted in the first. Well, that was as close to an even round as you get, although Obacar landed more punches, albeit they were very, very nominal. Down goes Trinidad. Well, just like the last fight, he was down in the second round and came back to beat Compass. We'll see what happens here. Once again, the speed. Obacar said he saw in the Anthony Stevens fight, which is when he was down also, same punch, saw that the speed gets to him. He's open. But this man gets up and fights like a demon. I mean, I'm, I've never seen a guy go down and get up so clear-headed. 13 seconds into round two. A flash knockdown for Obakar. Obakar said he was going to shock us. He certainly just did. Well, he said, I'm punching now as hard as I've ever punched. I'm in the best condition of my life. So here in round two, and early in round two, Obakar sending Trinidad to the canvas. Well, we all know what happened in the last fight. Trinidad came back to stop knockout artist Yuri Boy Compass in round four. And he was undefeated at the time also. Yeah, he was 56-0 with 50 knockouts. Uh, we know that uh, records mean nothing to Felix Trinidad. But something that Carr has that Yuri Boy Compass did not have is the excellent defense and great speed. Do some fighters, Bobby, just need a wake-up call to get their juices going? Well, I'll tell you what, there are fighters who've had a history of that, and I don't think you need a, a wake-up call for Trinidad, but sometimes he gets one anyway. That's a dangerous way to operate, though. He was kind of like Floyd Patterson. He always was down to begin with, and then he'd come back and beat you to death. Oh, two very low blows. Felix Trinidad, perhaps frustrated. Really going south of the Oh, what a wild left-handed miss by Carr. Looking to end it all on one punch. Yeah, Carr's getting a little bit overconfident from that knockdown. He thinks, well, I landed one and put him down. See, as much as a big puncher can land a big blow and 
close the fight out in one minute. Those speedy punches tend to hurt a little more just because of the speed, like a bullet. The reason they kill just because it's going so fast, these quick punches sting and drop people. And the strange thing is, Trinidad looking fresher after the knockdown. Less than a minute in round two. And now he's mad. His adrenaline's going. He's mad. He's landed two good, good hooks. Zinging hooks has Felix Trinidad. I mean, he, he keeps his eye right on his man. He knows where the punches are coming, ducks them, and then comes back with a hard punch. And he is the aggressor right now, even though he's been down. Carr keeping his distance. He's no fool. Less than 30 seconds, round two. 13 seconds in. Carr put Trinidad down. A flash knockdown. for round two. Well, let's see what they say in the corner. Let's listen. They want him to take an air, obviously. Hey, so one of those I told you so things. I told you to keep your hands up or else you get hit in the right hand. And that's what happened. And let's see what Daddy says. He's right. He didn't keep his hands up. He got hit by a right hand. Ferdy directly down the middle, right in between his gloves. You watch it again here. He's coming forward over Carr, and he's quick. His feet are right between the gloves. He didn't totally see it. Caught him on the chin. Boom. He's on the pants. And his last look convincingly, that is a convincing knockdown. That's a 10-8 round if ever there was one. Although he came back and fought good, still, that's a convincing knockdown. Young Trinidad does recover well and comes up fighting. Yeah. Absolutely outstanding recuperative powers for Trinidad, who may not have the greatest chin in the world, but he's recovered from that flash knockdown wholeheartedly, it seems. He does have the great heart, as we mentioned before, and a great finishing kick. Oh, there's a hard left hand by Trinidad. You can feel that up in the top row. As we've tracing, been tracing a history of Trinidad's fights, the round after he's knocked down tends to be the most brutal round for his opponents so far. At least that's his history. We saw that uh, particularly in the last fight, and then he finished off Compass in the subsequent round. You also saw that with the Anthony Stevens fight, and tracing back even further, I was told by Emil Shade, same thing happened to someone else that knocked him down. He knocked out the very next round. A unique history. You know, the temperature here is so cold. I mean, I'm sitting in this chair doing all I can to not flatter my teeth. And the fighters come from the dressing room, which is warm and heated, sweating to here. They have to wait a little bit before the fight. You might think that some of them just can't get heated up and in tune right away, and that they still may be a little cold. That's true, except he keeps getting knocked down in Puerto Rico in his house. And this guy is just not one of those kind of guys that starts to fight out too, too fast. But once he gets going, as he's doing right now. He's controlling, he's uh, leading, he's doing the aggressive moves. Obelkar has got to go, come back to taking command of the, of the fight. Well, the interesting thing is, halfway through round three, Felix Trinidad was put on his rear end uh, in the second round, but you get the feeling that he is about to pounce on Obelkar. And that this thing could turn fast. I think Obelkar is getting that feeling. Yeah. Another, another nice left hook by Trinidad. He's starting to find a little bit of a home with that. See, what's going to happen here, we can't, Trinidad cannot let himself just relax and walk to him because Obelkar is so quick, he springs forward, and that's how he caught Trinidad in the first place. Chopping right by Obelkar, looking for uh, more of the same from round two, but that time, Trinidad too fast. Oh. A wild looping left by Trinidad that missed by a mile. Something you seldom see. He har hardly ever does he miss by that much. Very economical with his punches and very accurate with his punches. Very much like the Julio Cesar Chavez in his prime, economical. Robert Gonzalez, the third man of the ring. He was like a, a taskmaster, a tough yeah. teacher. Yeah. Sometimes his tongue gets all tied up. You didn't know whether he's speaking English or Spanish. He comes out in the third tongue. He kept saying to the fighters, look at me, look yeah. at me. They want any shenanigans. Yeah, but you're allowed to stare a man down. Yeah. That's part of the game. Sure. Well, but he wanted to eliminate that element. Final seconds, round three. 
He's waited a long time in his car to do any fighting. Watch and the elbow. Long step right. Watch the elbow. All right, uh, guys, coming up next, our main event, the WBC Super Lightweight the title fight. A very relaxed Julio Cesar Chavez with his son, Julio Jr. and Omar flanking him. The publicists like to call it the final journey, but Chavez contends his last fight will be December of 95. He'd like five fights next year to step away. He'd like his 100th fight to be with Frankie Randall. Number 101, perhaps with Pernell Whitaker again. He is ready and poised for the last five or so fights to regain the form that once classified him as the best pound for pound in the world. Tony Lopez is the champion. All of a sudden, Panama Lewis is not in the middle of the ring, uh, of the uh, corner as he was before. I don't know what happened there, but he's doing most of the talking. So here we go into round number four. Obakar putting Trinidad on the canvas. Wild left miss again by Trinidad. Is it that Trinidad is off or that car is that quick? Oh. Car is quick, and I don't think Trinidad's all that much off. Car is quick, and he's elusive. He gives you a lot of angles. And it, it, you know, it's the type of thing where you'll see coming back. Car missed two or three shots. They're both good young guys with tremendous reflexes. Car trying to put that left-right in that combination. that got... Uh, that caused the trouble for Trinidad, but missing every time he tries it. There's the right hand again. And it was the right hand that put Trinidad down early in the second. In all Trinidad's fights, when he's knocked down, it, it comes from punches flush on the chin, right on the apex. But his record proves how successfully he comes back. 24-0 with 20 knockouts. Oh, there it is. Right hand by Trinidad. Momentarily dazed Carr. But Carr, dancing around, seems to be okay and very fresh. See what Carr did there, he rolled with that punch. He took a little of the power off it, bent his knees, which gave the appearance of maybe going down. And maybe he was momentarily stunned, but I don't think it was that effective. It was the tail end, and he was turning with it. He buckled for a brief second, then he regained himself. Right hand again, overhand right by Trinidad. See what Carr has to do now, if he's going to be more effective over the next couple rounds, is get some more solid punches in and make Trinidad worry. He's got to gain his pound of flesh as my trainer Tommy Parsons will say to get the respect. Well, what he's doing right now is losing and he's, he's falling back, falling back, and giving the appearance that Felix is taking over. And he is. Trinidad's taking over. He's coming on. And um, if Obacar doesn't land something hard to change this thing around, he's going in the wrong direction. And now Trinidad working the jab. That's three straight beautiful jabs to the head of Carr. Nice right hand by Carr to the body. Not a bad idea. Always a dangerous one. Though. Here's another jab by Trinidad looking to set up that heavy right. Let's see what happens. He landed with the big right about a minute into this round. Well, Trinidad looks like a coil spring. He looks like something just, just want to, you know, snap a, a, a coil spring and pop it. He is really fast. And so is Overclock. Nothing to take away from Overclock, though. Two cat-like uh, fighters here the kind of fight where you can't blink, you can't go to the refrigerator or the, to the restroom because one quick shot and this fight can be over. Yeah, and it's Felix doing the chasing and Overcar doing the retreating, so. Less than 20 seconds in round four. Trinidad really coming back after being knocked down in the early going of the second round. Landing a huge right hand about a minute into this fourth round. His best punch thus far. There's that Left again by Trinidad, that jab. He's on a roll. Staring down contest. You're moving to your left, and you're rolling. That's it. And you're waiting two rounds for him. Get out first. Keep poking at them. This is no. All right? Pull his knee on top of that. Come on, now. You want him to fight. But don't let him into the fight. Should be around soon, man. We work hard in the gym. Deep breath, baby. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep Deep breath. Step up. Bob and weave, baby. Bob and weave. If you go to your left, you got to roll. Let's take a, a look at what appeared to be that good right hand. It, 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 it kind of turned him around and buckled him. I, I don't. It, it landed hard enough to, to make him. You look at it up close, Barry. We'll see how. It, it, it was decent right hand, but it was a little more glancing because of the way Carr was spinning and twisting with it. I don't think it was a real solid uh, 
punch that would send the shockwave through anyone's body. Well, you heard the exhorting of Panama Lewis. He said, be like Sugar Ray Robinson. That is the idol of Obakar. The that most is the idol of many. Sure is, but uh, the most important thing he got from Robinson, the ability to throw the jab all night. There's that uppercut by Trinidad. Robinson, of course, another uh, Detroit fighter. Well, we've seen some blistering action here tonight. We still have Julio Cesar Chavez coming up tonight on this pay-per-view broadcast. Chavez and a rugged opponent, Tony Lopez. But right here, things really heating up in Trinidad, doing a lot of damage. This is a beautiful fight. Two wonderful condition and excellent talents. Uh, matching wits and, and reflexes right now. Uh, Felix has won the last two rounds. Even Panama has admitted that. And he wants his man to turn it around. There was another Panama. south of the border shot. But, but the, the, oh, and his got back. But that one, the referee saw. Right in the cup. Well, and I'm not talking golf. No, that's the way you <laughs> pitch it in the gym. They, they hit you, you hit them. Round five continues. We saw some good power punches from Trinidad in round four. Trinidad coming off the canvas in round two. And Trinidad stalking. Trinidad is out boxing Carr. Carr doesn't know how to get Ooh. close enough to hit. And he's missing continuously. There's a nice right hand. That's what he's been trying to do all night. He yeah. tried to step back, step back, then rear off that right foot and coil forward with some power. Only affected the one time, really. Yep, that's what ruined him. He, he, he got such good effect from that, he figured he'd go back to it. But it wasn't, it's not working for him. Carr's got to come back with the left hook, Ferdy, and throw a few more combinations. Look, combination look, by Trinidad. Look at that speed. So quick. A little trickle of blood to the left nostril of Carr. Tell you what, that right hand off the side of Carr seemed to do much more than the first one he got hit with in the last round. And the pace really picking up here. Outstanding exchange. Get the punches up to Trinidad, says Gonzalez. Trinidad is applying so much pressure. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's just, what he's doing is forcing Carr to fight with him now. He is so busy right now. Left and right by Trinidad. And his jab is a thing of beauty. And it's popping back the head of Overcar and discombobulating him. He hasn't got his timing right. Less than 30 seconds in round five. Great hand by Trinidad. Oh, boy, is Trinidad coming on. He is teeing off on Obacar, who continues to show a lot of side-to-side -side movement just to escape from Trinidad. Now a little holding by Carr. Well, I don't know. Ooh, a left hand by Trinidad. Everything's I, landing. I don't know if Felix Trinidad knows how to spell Sugar Ray Robinson, but that's who he's fighting like. I'll tell you what, he's fighting tremendous. He's fighting some fight. Oh, after the bell, a slashing right by Trinidad. Well, coming up next, our featured event, the WBC Super Lightweight Championship. Here is Tony the Tiger Lopez being cheered on in his dressing room, awaiting Julio Cesar Chavez, three-time world champion, last held the WBA lightweight title and twice held the IBF junior lightweight uh, titles in his only fight this year. He lived up to his nickname, stopping a very game. Greg Haugen, while calling Chavez a great champion, Lopez says he will enjoy ending Chavez's career. We shall see. Go on, get that jab and find that rhythm. That's better work now. Give me that work. Back into the body, open. You don't even back in the fight. The fight is over. The fight is even now. Got to go to the body and finish up the left hook in the head and roll out. Let's go. Body to the head and roll out. It is round six. Felix Trinidad looking like dynamite in that last round. Robert Gonzalez signaling for time. Now time in. Here we go. This is for the IBF Welterweight Championship. Felix Trinidad knocked down 13 seconds into round two, got up quickly, and he has been better ever since. Well, Panama Lewis just said to Obacar, said you let him win that round, now he evened up the fight. The even fight, he's back in the fight. Now get out there and do what you're supposed to. Get back in your rhythm. Well, at least he's keeping score pretty good. I got him ahead by one point, but uh, it should be about an even fight on scorecards. I have a dead even uh, three rounds to two, but the knockdown counteracting that extra round and making it dead even. Felix Trinidad coming off an excellent round. His jab continued to be effective. Go measure, Clark, go measure. I wonder what he said. 
know what the referee would call it. He said something to Obakar. It's hard to make out. You can see Obakar trying to set up that right hand again. Now he worked a nice left hook inside. A stinging left by Obakar that got in. Now another good left hook by Carr, beginning to come on a little bit now. Right hand just missed. What head movement by Trinidad to elude that punch. And a wild left, Carr able to maintain his balance. He almost went down. Gotta be careful there, doesn't he, Bobby? Because if he opens himself up, Trinidad's just gonna unload. You know, they're both so quick and they jump in and out and miss punches. Ooh, what a black uppercut. I'm sorry about it. No, it's okay. It's, it's the kind of thing where any mistake either one makes can, get, can cost him a clean shot and a possible knockdown. So there is not much margin for error in a fight like this. The difference is that the momentum is on a good Trinidad. Trinidad with a left hand, but Carr showing a good chip. It's a good clean left, and then they what? Carr, to his credit, came back with a couple himself. Carr 32 and 0, 20 knockouts, his first world title shot. He has been knocked down before. He came off the canvas several times to beat Livingstone Bramble. Carr beginning to bleed from the nose, that jab that he's popping. That Tito's popping in there, Felix popping in there, is taking effect. Oh, right, right hand to the head by Trinidad. He's got everything. He's got straight right hands. He's got hooks. He's got uppercuts. Has the entire repertoire. There's a good left by Trinidad, sending Carr back. See the power right now. Trinidad is starting to take its toll, not only on Carr's face and body, but on his attitude and his resilience and his heart. You got to find out just what he's made of. I know the Carr wants to win. Whoa, whoa! But Carr able to come back, fired back nicely. Matter of fact, he got he got Trinidad's attention quite well right there. What a flurry to end this round, which may have ended just five seconds early. We still have five seconds left, and the warning from Gonzalez to Trinidad for once again, I believe, hitting after the bell. Protect yourself at all times, please. Go away for this guy. Don't say like a fucking. And here, let's take a look at a good left hand by Trinidad. It's the kind of work he's been doing. Look at that little hook right off. Makes him pay. Makes makes everything that Obakar try carry a price. Mark of an excellent fighter. You see it again as another angle. He's just coming forward, coming forward, and countering, countering, countering. Obakar's trying to be the speedster. And you saw a few good shots here at the end of the bell. They're still hitting each other. And during all of this, Panama Lewis screaming at the top of his lungs in the face of Oba Carr. And not Teddy Atlas looked like Mother Teresa. Yeah, not uh, nice length. Well, he, he sees the, the momentum go. Uh, and he's seeing that his fighter needs to be inspired, needs to get mad. And uh, I don't know what else he could tell him to do. It's just a question. There's too much talent in there with him right now. Felix Trinidad having the edge in momentum, having the edge in speed and boxing ability right now. Well, Panama Lewis has a good reputation as a tremendous conditioner. Oh, car, car, buckles. Buckles. Yeah. car buckles and able again to regroup. And hit on high on the head over the years, just like you said, Bobby, before. That, that punch right there. Now, weaken his knees. Punches car. on top of the head have much more effect than people give him credit for. Car holding on to the waist of Trinidad to regain. His composure and a right hand by Trinidad. But Carr unloading, fighting back. Well, Carr is forced now. He's cornered. He's forced to fight. He's a wounded animal right now that has to fight for his life. Blood coming from the nose of Carr. Carr uppercut. Carr showing a lot of courage here. Getting belted around and still able to answer back. He's still dangerous. He's still dangerous. Round seven scheduled for 12. Buddy shot with the left hand right to the ribs by Trinidad. What a hurt. Baby face killer we have here. Yeah, he doesn't even need a gun. Oh, he just looks calm and cool. That's the midway point of round seven. Carr taking a beating in this round. Look at him measure the right. And still he gets a hook instead. Right hand. 
by Carr, but pretty much so systematic. It's a nice left hook and another one, but one at a time. He's oh. got to follow with the right. What a left counter and a right by Trinidad. That sends him reeling into the ropes. Combination to the head. Carr hanging on. Carr's hurt. Carr's taking a major league beating here. But he's showing so much heart here. There goes the mouthpiece of Carr off that wild swing and a miss. And it's coming right in front of us. Now they'll have to wait for a stoppage of action to pick it up. And that's exactly now what happens. Bobby Jez picks it up, and here it is. He hands it to Robert Gonzalez, and Gonzalez will go over to the corner. They'll wash it out and put it back in the park. It almost now. landed in my cup of tea. There's a lovely uh, thought. Oh, God, heaven. Panama Lewis taking his sweet time, and he's talking to his fighter. That took a nice, sweet little 20, 30 second rest there. So Trinidad continues to inflict the punishment after he went down in round two. Similar pattern to the Yuri Boy Campus fight. <laughs> round seven of the books. And Carr's face now beginning to show the damage. Don't give away the title. Don't stay there and fight this man's fight, brother. Do you use that strong leg? Use it, brother. Use your speed, please. Oh, you understand? You're trying to roll a man right here too much, and he know it. That's how you get caught. Forget about rolling his right hand. Just go to work and stay busy. All right, and drop that. Okay? Uh, All right. Drop that. Fuck that shot. Bring okay. him out and, and get a squeeze in there. Bajito, Conta. Pero pegando. Y pullando. Está bien. Y pullando. Y comiendo que se muera ahora. It's a now the time to punch hard. Go down low and then come up high. And it's time to, I'd hate to say, kill, but that's what he said. Leaning knockout. It's time to go for the kill. You know, sending in this man who is a babyface killer. Is Carr on the verge? Does he have any gas left of the tank as we enter into round eight? Blood all over the front of Carr's trunks, his own. We have seen earlier tonight in the first fight, you're not, oh, a little argument here. I told you both the young ones, the short fight, he'll keep it up. Punching on the break once again, that has been the bone of contention throughout. I should have said that again in Spanish to Trinidad because I'm not sure he understood. Uh, Trinidad doesn't care. He figures, he figures he's got the fight won. He's going to finish this off now anyway. Second minute. Now, Carr still has some pop. He's got some excellent skills. He's got to get out of the way of the big right hand and that jab. Good right hand by Trinidad over the top. And then a low blow, but Gonzalez didn't the, see it. Yeah, he was on the wrong side of Gibraltar. Then. Yes. <laughs> Left hand flush on the face by Trinidad. Just throwing everything at Carr. He's out speeding him. He's out slicking him. It's too much reflex, too much spring to his punches. Trinidad knocked down 13 seconds in a round two, but he has dominated from that point on. This punch is not penetrating by Carr. Good defense. They're being caught by the gloves of Trinidad. And he's throwing everything there is to throw is over Carr. I, I remind you, we saw that first fight. It looked like Castro was completely out through one punch, and it was all over. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know that that can happen in this fight to either one of these fighters. They're both, uh, I think, more resilient than that. Obercar is getting hit too flush with all of the punches that Trinidad lands, whereas Trinidad has at least got his gloves in front of his face. And he doesn't get hit flush. When he does, he seems to take Oh, There he goes, Carr, down to the canvas for the first time of the fight. Very wobbly. Big right Very uppercut wobbly. and a right hand over, right, over, right over the top of it. Yeah, the uppercut did it, Bobby. His eyes just went cross. He's got 52 seconds to get through here in round eight. Will he survive? Wild miss there by Trinidad trying to end it right there. That's unlike him. Now he goes up and the finish down. He goes again. He walked into a tremendous right hand. It was a great timing shot by Trinidad. No three knockdown rule here. IBF rules. Can he make it through the final seconds? 27 seconds. Trinidad goes right back in. Combination of that foot spurting fight. And Gonzalez steps in. It's all over. It's all over. Felix Trinidad remains undefeated. And this, the first defeat in Obacar's professional career. And this may be the most important, significant win 
in his career because Felix Trinidad has been building and building and building up to these major crossroad fights. He had one with Yuri Boy Campa, but his credentials were questionable. <clears throat> Nothing questionable about Obakar, who came in here highly touted and had every possibility to win tonight, yet the win was significant and it was impressive on the part of Felix Trinidad. As I said, the night we he fought for the title. Felix Trinidad again retains his championship, solidifies his status as one of the most exciting and sparkling fighters in the world and one of the best indeed pound for pound in the world. And once again, he comes back from a knockdown to win the fight. We're going to give you another really good look at that uh, first punch, that right uppercut that started the beginning of the end uh, for Gobacar. And here's Trinidad on the inside. Good leverage, lifts it up. The right hand was just kind of a, here, take that with you too, because he was already seriously hurt. Right hand was a secondary uh, punch. The, the uppercut is what did it. The right uppercut was just right on the button. All right, Bobby, our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr., is standing by for the official time, so let's go over to Jimmy. Damas y caballeros, tenemos el tiempo, dos minutos, 41 segundos in round number ocho. Ladies and gentlemen, with the time of two minutes, 41 seconds in round number eight, the referee stops the contest. El referee terminó la pelea. El ganador por knockout técnico. The winner by way of technical knockout. El still champion. El invicto. Felix Tito Trinidad. So there you have it. Felix Trinidad, after being put on the canvas in the second round, comes back to stop Obacar, 241 of round number eight. Coming up next, our main event, the WBC Super Lightweight Championship. Julio Cesar Chavez is back in action against rugged challenger Tony Lopez here on Chavez's home turf. Let's take you once again into the dressing room of the champion, Julio Cesar Chavez, staying warm with the blanket. It is cold here. He is arguably the most visible and popular person in all of Mexico, closing in on his 95th fight, having been on the professional scene since 1980. On February 20th of 93, Chavez pulled in over 132,000 to Azteca Stadium in Mexico City when he defended his title against Greg Haugen. That's the largest paid attendance in boxing history. That is what you call drawing power, and it was a night that we won't soon forget. But tonight, the focus for Chavez is on Tony Lopez, another experienced veteran who's been in so many wars and comes off the convincing win over Haugen in June. The only other common opponent, Rocky Lockridge, who is decisioned by both Chavez and Lopez. Standing by in the ring is the fight doctor, Freddy Pacheco. Tito, parece... Parece que te tienen que no, no, poner un knockdown para que empieces a pelear. It looks like you gotta have a knockdown before you can start to fight. Eso parece que sí, en la pelea que me han tumbado, pues, cuando me levanto, pues, ay, me levanto como con un poquito de rabia. Y ahí es que caliento, de verdad, porque no sé qué me pasa, pero el bolso así, el bolso le pueden dar a uno y, y se pega él. He, he says sometimes he, when he goes down, he, he gets up, but then he gets mad. Sometimes that's the way it is in boxing. It's a wake-up call. He's got to get up mad, and when he gets up, he's right. And yes, yes, yes. Lo que vamos a ver es el el segundo tercer knockdown era necesario. Was it necessary to knock him down a second, third time to finish the fight? Bueno, según el árbitro de decisión del árbitro, el árbitro pensó de que Obacar estaba en buenas condiciones todavía para seguir combatiendo y lo dejó combatir. No, no. He said the, the referee let him go the second time. He, he looked like he was all right, and he, but it was on the way to the knockdown. If that's the way they wanted, that's the way they do it. Um, él te lastimó en algún tiempo. Bueno, cuando me tumbó, sí, me lastimó, o sea, me lastimó porque me tumbó, sí, sí, se sentí el golpe, pero que yo estaba con algunas condiciones y cuando me paré ya yo estaba consciente de todo lo que estaba pasando. He said yes, he got hurt that that round when he got uh, when he went down, he was conscious, but the guy can bang and here's the guy that can bang, Obacar, who gave it a great shot. I uh, thank you for the opportunity, Don, and uh, I'd like to tell all my people back at home, I tried and I went out like a soldier. Real soldiers don't fall. Well, you had him in trouble early, big surprise, and you failed to take advantage, but that's because this guy is such a great boxer, you think? Yeah, he's a great champion, and I got to take my head off. Uh, well, this wasn't my night tonight. 
but you look very sharp and you, you certainly no no lack of heart you tried very hard do you think you just got outspeeded was the guy just too slick for you well i don't know if it was that out this probably just wasn't my night uh i'll be back uh like i said i'm a soldier uh i'd like to thank don king i'd like to thank my manager for sticking with me and uh i'll be back yes you will because you have no shortage of heart or talent That's right. and so we're going to take it we're, we're going to take a look at that. Stick around and watch your moment of glory. And this is where it almost happened. Aquí. Pasó la, la derecha. Sí, bueno, este, Ovo Calme dio una buena derecha. Él pega bien duro con esa mano. Oh, that was a right hand and it hurt hard. No. Uh, well, I set him up for the hook right because every time I, uh, I fan him, he pulled straight up. And I wanted to throw the hook and come back with the right hand. And it landed. And uh, I was successful there, but I just wanted to success, success for the uh, victory. But I'll be back. All right, now here's where you got in trouble. Aquí es donde eh, Carr em, empezó a tener problemas. El uppercut y la derecha. Was that uppercut? What did it? Uh, just, just the excessive blows that I took in the fight. Uh, I tried like a, uh, like a real champion, but I just didn't come out the victorious one. Yeah. He's a, he's a true champion. He's a true champion. I got to give it to him. Take my head off to him. That he is. El, el uppercut fue el, el, el uppercut lo, lo puso en problema <coughs> y después necesitaste la, la derecha. Sí, este, le di un upper, un upper de derecha y le, luego le metí una, una, una derecha recta y ahí fue que cayó por primera vez. Yeah, he said the uppercut did the damage and the right hand followed to put him down and then after that it was all over as far as he's concerned. Yo quiero decir algo a Ovacal personalmente, que es un gran boxeador, sigue adelante porque te vas a ser campeón mundial. He said, keep, keep fighting, you will be the champion, you're a good fighter and he was proud to fight you tonight. Gracias. Ok. Ok. All right. <laughs> And that was, generally speaking, that translation was, that's hello to all the Caribbean. And now back to Steve Albert, who's right at ringside. All right, thank you very much, Ferdy. 241 round eight. Has a two-inch height advantage. And look at the weights. They weighed in 30 hours.